the shield of faith. I believe that God is for me. God helps me. God blesses me. Therefore, I don't have to be afraid of anything. I don't have to feel guilty. I don't have to feel depressed. I don't have to feel no strength. I can have a five step to victory to overcome sin. First, be aware of any sin or anything that affects our life. So any any kind of sin, when we notice that, oh, I have sinned, or the best is when we notice we have sinful thoughts before the sinful thoughts become action, that I see that I have sinful thoughts. Believe that any sin or negative things are, ne are destructive. So anything negative, any sin are destructive. Apply biblical principles to the problems. What does the Bible tell me to do? So what does the Bible tell me to do? To forgive, to be kind to people, to love a wife and husband, to do evangelism, to love people, to be kind to people, to forgive people. And then pray to have forgiveness and strength. So, so pray to God, please forgive me and give me strength. And choose to obey God immediately. So this is the five step to victory. I hope you can remember this. So aware, and then destructive, and then Bible, and then pray, and then obey. Okay, let me use different illustrations. If we have depression, unhappiness, that we are unhappy because someone yelled at us. So we become aware that I'm affected by someone. I'm, affect, I'm aware that I feel unhappy because someone hurt me. And I know that it's destructive. Even depression is destructive because it will continue to cause me to be depressed. And then what does the Bible say? The Bible says, rejoice in the Lord. And what can men do to me? God is for me. What can men do to me? That they cannot destroy my life. Because when I trust in God, God will bless me. And so pray to God to forgive my depression and give me strength. And I choose to obey God. Now for depression, how can you choose to obey? That we can say, God has all kinds of blessings for me. When I trust God and obey God, God is happy with me and God will bless me. Therefore, I can choose to, to be thankful to God. When I'm thankful, God is very happy because the Bible says that, you know, when we come, uh, come draw near to God and He'll draw near to us. When we dwell in Him, He'll dwell in us and we'll bear much fruit. So that means God is happy with us whenever we pray to Him. So I can say, when I pray to Him, God is very, very happy. Therefore, I can choose to be happy, to be joyful. Now, it's true that it's easier to change our mind, to say, God will help me. But to change your emotions is a little harder. Because sometimes you, you say, oh, God will help me, but the heart is still you know, under pressure. But we continue to thank God, continue to, to praise God. And rejoice in the Lord. Lord, I can rejoice in you. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord, for all your gifts. God, you continue to bless me. I can relax in you. I can rejoice in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The more we do that, the more we become joyful. So then we are choosing to do things that cause us to be joyful. By counting the blessings of God. By thanking God. By uh, counting the blessings. Oh, when I pray to Him, He gives me peace. He gives me, he gives me uh, uh, comfort. He gives me joy. So He's loving me. Therefore, I can relax in Him. I can, I can enjoy Him. So we count the blessings and then we can be more joyful. Okay, now I use an uh, illustration. If someone looks at a woman and then he has lust. So first he's aware of that. And then he believes that this is destructive. So when we have the lust, don't let it go into action. Now for many guys, when they have lust, the next thing is they will continue to stare at the woman. Or they will flirt with the woman. They will say things to attract the woman. And then they might want to touch the woman. You know, so there are different things they want to do. We don't want to stop any of these actions. By taking care of the sins right in the, our mind. So whenever we are aware that we have any lust for someone, we know that it's destructive, 
And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that we live in holiness. As the Father is holy, so we live in holiness. And then we pray for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me for my lust. Now, even lust without action is sin. Because Jesus said when we look at a woman with lust, we already have committed adultery. So we ask for forgiveness and strength. And then I choose to obey God. How to obey God? Now, if the woman causes us to lust, we can turn away from the woman. And then in our mind, don't continue to think about her. But just to bless her, she is another human being. I want to think of her as another child of God. I just want to bless her. I don't, I don't want to have any lust for her. And I want to keep myself holy. I want to thank God, live in the holiness of God, so that my heart is filled with the joy and the holiness of God. Now, let me use another illustration now. Um, for instance, a person want to yell at someone. He's angry with someone. So we are aware that we have anger. Now, when we have anger that is rushing uh, toward us, uh, I mean rushing out from us, it might be helpful just for us to calm down a little bit first, to breathe deeply and, and ask God to help us. Now, this five steps to victory can be changed to three steps to victory. It would be first aware and then pray and then choose to action. Okay, because we understand that all sins are destructive and we understand what the Bible tells us to do. So we are aware that we have anger and then we be believe that we know that it's destructive and apply the biblical principle that the, uh, the anger of men cannot accomplish the righteousness of God. So we pray for forgiveness of my anger and, and give, I pray for strength. And I choose to obey God. So I choose not to be angry with the person. I say, I understand that everyone has weaknesses, that he has done something wrong, and I don't have to be angry with him. I don't have to be carrying his sins. I don't have to, to be uh, affected by him. Uh, he, his problem will not take away God's blessings for me when I obey God and love God. His actions will not cause God to take away my blessings. He is not, he cannot destroy my life. Therefore, I choose not to be affected by him. I choose to, to thank God. I choose to uh, think of the good things about him. And I choose to think, understand he has problems, he has sins. And I choose to forgive him and to be kind to him, to be nice to him instead of uh, being affected by him. So I choose to, uh, to say nice things to him. I choose to smile at him. Now, maybe the first step is just choose to pray for him. Lord, help me to bless him, that I don't want to count his sins. I don't want to, to be, continue to angry with him. I want to bless him. I want to help him. So, uh, when we do that, now it might take time for us to build up uh, the, uh, the ability to really uh, want to bless him, to be kind to him. But we keep praying, Lord, help me, help me, help me that I will love him more and care about him and then I'll have more joy and strength to overcome my anger. Okay, another illustration. For instance, in a husband and wife situation, that there is problem. You know, actually, the problem of marriage sometimes is not just one day. It has happened for many days. It has problems for a long time already. That, uh, and then now something happened that we become angry or frustrated, or even sometimes people, people want to have a divorce. So the person become aware that he wants to have a divorce, or he wants to, you know, this, he, want, he dislike his spouse. He, he doesn't like his spouse. He, he, he doesn't want to think about his spouse. And he understands that this is destructive. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that we love the, the wife as Christ loves the church. And then the, the wife will also submit to the husband. And also, of course, to love the husband also. Now, to submit to her husband doesn't mean whatever wrong thing the husband does and the, the husband demand the wife to stop going to church that the wife will continue to, to submit. It doesn't mean that. 
it it means that when it's according to God's will that we submit if you know because the Bible says you know to submit to God and not to men is you know it's right it's right for us not to submit to men when he's against God so the biblical principle is to you know to be kind to be loving and to forgive and to forget so we pray for forgiveness and strength now choose to obey it sometimes need actions to clear all the past hurts in the marriage that first we think about all the things we have done in the past that caused uh, damage to the marriage we we'll say Lord please forgive me that I have not been nice to my spouse I have said things that hurt her I have uh, not loved her I have not uh, cared about her I have not listened to her so we we admit to God Lord please forgive me I have sinned I have committed many sins and so when we see that and also in the past there is the history of all these bad things so in order to correct all these bad things it takes time so the first thing is that we'll, in my mind will say I want to forgive my spouse and be nice to my spouse and to be kind to her and and want to build up the marriage again and Lord please give me the wisdom and the ability to start doing things that will build up the relationship that we want to start to be nice to her to love her and to listen to her be kind to her respond to her and sometimes it could mean to seek a counselor to help us in a marriage so for marriage because there's a long-term problem of many many hurts many many problematic relationship many problematic actions actions in the past that has caused problems in a marriage then we want to uh, take care of this step by step to show more love and be to be listen to listen to the person to the spouse and to be kind and try and, and express to, to the spouse and say I want to build a better relationship with you I want to rebuild the marriage I'm sorry for what I've done in the past I really want to build up the relationship and uh, I'm willing to take steps and you can suggest to me what I can do now this is submission to God but many people say my wife he, she also yells at me she she does all these things to me so I don't like her now if both person count the bad things of their person then the marriage can never be recovered so we need to learn to say okay she has her problem I have my problem so we both need to uh, confess our sins to each other and ask for forgiveness and to learn to be kind to their person so it need, takes time to rebuild but when we are choosing that direction of rebuilding the marriage and forgiving each other and be nice to each other then the marriage will start going uh, toward the way of healing instead of going into more and more problems now for many marriages they are going into more and more serious problems because they yell at each other they dislike each other they don't want to do good things to each other and then the marriage will become worse and worse so I hope we we'll all say you know it's destructive all the bad actions in a marriage is destructive it would destroy the marriage and I want to listen to my spouse and be kind to her and be, uh, to to do nice things to her and do things that make her happy and express my desire to express my desire I want to build, rebuild the marriage I want uh, to ask for your forgiveness I want to be nice to you I want I will forgive you also and I want to start praying with you and be kind to you so we do all these things these steps one by one to rebuild the, the marriage so it's it's necessary for us to uh, when we want to uh, overcome certain sins uh, if the sin has been for a long time it has to take certain actions now this is another big issue how to rebuild a marriage is another big issue okay so when we have time we can talk about that okay now here I compare 
manage our thoughts to overcome sins. These are thoughts that cause sins. So I put a cross here, an X here. This is wrong. And thoughts to overcome sins, okay? The, the bad thoughts is, I hate that person. I don't want to forgive him. I don't want to see him. And then the thought, the, God, the godly thought is to hate, to believe that hating him and not forgiving will hurt me. If I don't forgive him, it will hurt me. Blessing him will bless myself. So I want to choose to bless him. And the destructive thought, my wife is troublesome. I don't want to listen to her and spend time with her. That's destructive. And then the constructive thought, I want to listen to my wife and handle our problems. I should work on my marriage. So we convince ourselves that I should learn to work on my marriage. I want to change my mind so that I want to work on my marriage. I want to appreciate my wife and build up the marriage. So the thought is to build up instead of to destroy and to dislike. And then I want to that's destructive. I want to yell at people when I'm angry. And the constructive, the godly thought, handling my anger is pleasing to God. If I handle my anger, it's pleasing to God. And then the destructive thought, I have lust after that woman. I enjoy the lust. This is destructive. But the constructive, the godly thought is to, to say that lust will destroy my life. Purity brings God's blessing. So I want to take care of my life. So I hope that we all will pay attention to the whole life. From the inside to the outside, to my thoughts, to my desires, to my relationship with people, to my family life, my church life, my relationship with church members and uh, friends and how I uh, use my life, how I serve God, all these things we examine. Are we sincerely blessing people? Are we sincerely caring about people? Are we sincerely forgiving people? Are we sincerely kind to people? And we want to build up the church, build up God's kingdom. And uh, do we want to take care of the lust and any kind of anger, any kind of depression, any kind of negative things in my life? And, and to believe in God that He has a wonderful plan for my life. My life can go higher and higher. So I believe in God's plan and I want to follow God and then He will make my life go higher and higher. So we want to examine our whole life. Examine our relationship with people. Our, first, our inner life, our thought life. Am I thinking good thoughts, godly thoughts, or evil thoughts, or lustful thoughts, or uh, destructive thoughts, negative thoughts? Uh, so we want to change that. We want to give ourselves the motivation. If I follow God, my whole life will be blessed by God. So therefore, I want to, to obey God. I want to bless other people. So that is a godly thought. So we examine our whole life. Now for myself, if I notice any area in my life that I have not taken care of, I would say, God, please help me. God, please help me. Please help me to dedicate my life to you and take care of any kind of sin because I don't want any kind of sin to block my life, to take away the blessings of God. So I hope you all have this motivation because any kind of sin will take away the blessings of God, even if it's someone else's fault first. Even if it's your spouse's fault that, that your wife is yelling at you. Actually, she yells at us because we have done something wrong first. So we ask God to forgive us and we try to forgive our wife and to be nice to her and try to communicate with her. So we want to take steps to take care of any kind of problem. Now, if people believe in different uh, worldly thoughts, thoughts that are not from the Bible. For instance, I had to get more money. Uh, I have to make use of other people. I have to build up my power. You know, any kind of this uh, belief system, this value system, we have to change then we want to learn to believe that God is the source of all blessings. God will provide for me. I don't have to seek money all the time. I can seek God and then God will provide for me. Of course, we need to work, but we don't need to put money as our first priority. We put God as the first priority 
and God will provide for me and open for the way for me to earn money. So we take care of any kind of thought inside us that is not godly. For instance, someone uh, wants to marry a non-Christian woman, we know that this is against the Bible. Then we say, I want to change this thought. Now it's not hard because he already likes the woman. So he has convinced himself that if I continue like this woman, then I want to marry her, and then I, you know, I'm marrying a non-Christian. Now I can try to bring her to Christ. If, he, if she refuses to believe in Jesus, then I have to say no to the relationship. Then we have to convince ourselves that it is wrong to do that. It will destroy my life because it will, you know, after marriage, I will be influenced by the uh, woman who is an, a non-Christian woman and she would, you know, try to affect me, influence me not to love God so much, not to be so devoted to the church, to, the, to God. So it will affect my Christian life and also, you know, that in the, tr in the family, then there will be fights because there's... Mm -hmm.